In this video, I'm going to briefly show you how to make a block toy for kids. And the idea is this right here. And so what we're going to use is a Boolean modifier to cut these pieces out. We're only going to make the top of this, not the other sides. And in terms of scale, I'm not too concerned about the scale overall. You're going to see that mine is much thicker than that image right there, but that's okay. The cutouts are made by the Boolean modifier, so let's look at that first. Here's the table. I have one modifier, and it's Boolean. Now, it defaults this object, but I wanted to have four objects here, so I could have added four Boolean modifiers, or I switch it to collection, and then I put all my cutouts in this collection here. And that way you can make the entire collection visible or invisible. I'll show you how I made uh, these blocks overall, but we have this collection of blocks, so I made it invisible, and then went to the table and added the Boolean modifier. Operand type, instead of object, I went to collection, and then I just dragged in the cutouts. Alright, the other thing I did, so I took the original cutout shapes, because there needs to be a gap or else it's going to be very difficult to squeeze these blocks through the holes. And I'll do a direct overhead view so you can see the gap right here. So I made this block 90% the size of the block that I cut with. And so there's basically a 10% difference around the edge. How do you do that? Well, I left this triangle here. I did not make this triangle any smaller. So let's go ahead and make it invisible so you can see the cutout. That cutout comes from this triangle block up here. Uh, so there's actually two triangle blocks and the one up top is used in the cutout, but this one I want to make a little bit smaller. So I'm going to scale it, S to scale. Now you want to be careful because my origin is not in the center of the object, so I went to bounding box center. You want to be careful if you're doing uh, 3D cursor is going to scale it towards the center. But if you go uh, individual origin, it's not going to scale how you think. So I just did bounding box center, scale. And so you can use the mouse to scale it. Oops. Actually, now I didn't quite scale it the way I wanted. Scale. Uh, I'm going to do shift Z. And that'll let me scale it on the other two axes and 0.9. All right, so we got a slight problem that it didn't it didn't really put it where I wanted to. So I'm just going to go G to grab, and I'm going to do my best to center it right here. That should be good enough. So it has space on all sides, right there, so it'll fit through, and maybe even scale it a little smaller. Scale uh, Shift Z to scale on the other axes, 0.9 again, and then we'll grab it and put it right in the center. All right, so that's pretty good right there. All right, so that is how to build this. How thick should the blocks be? Well, they need to be a little thicker than the table, than, than this uh, table that you made right here. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to make a block. Make sure you're in object mode, shift A to add. We're going to add a mesh. I like to go with circle. I'm not actually concerned with making a circle, but you'll see why this is a good starting point. I'm going to change the starting location to two. I need to do more than that. We'll go right over to there, minus 12. All right. Vertices, that's a lot of vertices. Well, if I did three vertices, I have a triangle and tricky to see this. I'm worried if you click somewhere else, the add circle uh, dialog goes away and you can't change the number of vertices. But if you look, by changing the number of vertices, if I go three, I have an equilateral triangle. Uh, the way I made my star is I went with a five and then I extruded and made the rest of the star. Let's go with six and just make some random shape. Of course, change the size of it if you want. We're in object mode, 
So grab this, drag it out a little more. There are no, let's go into edit mode. There are no bases. There's just vertices right here and edges. And we can do a few things. We could, let's see, duplicate. Well, could extrude. It could be a little dangerous. I'm not sure. Let's delete these, delete vertices. There we go. I'm going to take these two vertices right here and F to fill. Uh, we could add another vertex and let's just extrude this side. Oh, there is no vertex in the middle of these two. So you could subdivide them. you could subdivide it with two cuts and now you have two there. I realize I'm not that far from the original shape if I just drag these a little bit and get the original shape, G to grab, get very close to the original. Uh, I don't really know what shape I'm building here. Let's just build some type of weird moon shape here. All right, so once you're pretty good with your shape, we're gonna finish with the edges. So I'm gonna fill the adjacent edges in. So. Make sure that they all have the same Z coordinate. That's important. So you actually are creating a flat surface. Highlight everything. Remember your origin is going to look like a vertex. Uh, I'm going to fill now. <clears throat> and what we're going to do next is extrude. However, before we extrude, it's important to know the inside and the outside. So I'm clicking the viewport overlays here and going down to face orientation. Red is the inside, blue is the outside. So you really shouldn't see red, but because there is, there's no inside to the shape. Uh, there's no, uh, it's just one set of faces. There's no top to it. So I'm highlighting the whole thing in edit mode, E to extrude. And if you look, this is red. That's not good. When you go to do a Boolean, uh, when you move it over inside your table and you do a Boolean uh, intersect uh, difference, it won't come out the way you want it to. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna extrude again. But if you look, when I go downwards, you see how it's blue now. If I go up, it's red, down it's blue. So you do want it to be blue. Uh, the bottom is blue, the sides are blue. Hopefully this backside is also blue, but what happened on the top? There is nothing on the top right here. So I could try to fill it the way it's highlighted, but I want to get, get to, I want to get this edge and this edge created at the top. So before I fill the whole entire top, let's just connect these two vertices with F to fill, F to fill those two vertices. Now we're going to highlight all the top ones and F to fill. Ooh, that's not good. I'll undo that. I guess we'll just do one piece at a time. So we'll go with those three, F to fill, those three, F to fill, these four, F to fill. All right, so that hopefully will give you the uh, block shape right there. And then all I did was look like this, G to grab, Oh, let's go to object mode. There we go, G to grab, move it over, uh, scale in the Z. Make it a little bigger, G to grab, and then I went and intersected or found the difference with the Boolean modifier. Probably make this a little bigger, scale, shift, Z, and make it a little bit more similar, G, shift, Z, to move that over, and then you can uh, make the difference cut out with that shape. So that's how I made these shapes. Uh, I will say the these two shapes, I just used the mesh cube and the mesh cylinder right away. Uh, so you can custom, you need to custom make a couple shapes. Uh, let's say custom make three of the four shapes. Um, this one is not part of my actual project. This is just to show you how I created these shapes.